welcome to the FBC Global Church Podcast. I'm one of the Global Missions Pastors here, Scott McManigal, and uh, today I've got the uh, just the real privilege of interviewing uh, a very, very close and dear couple um, that we've just grown to love very dearly, uh, Hanson and Jocelyn Manova, and uh, we've been working together now for many years, and so Hanson and Jocelyn, <clears throat> I know we might, we might, most people here at FBC know you guys. You've been, you've actually come here and attended our conference many times, um, stayed in many homes, but we do have some turnover and we might have some listeners that have never met you before. So tell us, tell us who you are. Tell us a little bit about your family. Okay. Um, I am uh, Hanson. Manova, and uh, this is my wife, uh, Jocelyn, and we are um, blessed with two children, uh, Aimlin Manova, she's uh, 11 years old, and uh, our son Hudson, Hudson is uh, eight years old, um, so that's our family, and I uh, came to know about Fellowship Bible Church through uh, Pastor Tim McManigal. Uh, who used to visit our seminary, uh, the Evangelical Theological Seminary, which is uh, known as Asian Christian Academy popularly. Uh, he used to come here to teach uh, during the uh, Spiritual Emphasis Week. And uh, the first thing that I really got attracted uh, with this man was his um, uh, emphasis on grace. Like uh, his messages was uh, different because in a seminary, uh, there were so many intellectual uh, sermons, apologetic sermons, and it's all to train your mind to uh, refute, think, analyze. Uh, but when Pastor Tim came here, he talked about um, our souls, uh, how we can relate to God. And uh, first he talked about uh, the message of grace. And one of the major striking points in his message was um, like, uh, from, our, from the beginning of our Christian life till the completion of our salvation, it's all the work of God. Mm. And God builds our life through several events and experiences um, to a goal that he has actually have for us in Christ. Um, that was, um, it was kind of uh, a, a revelation to me because uh, I was always thinking that I'm saved and I need to do something to um, get the approval of God to attain um, my maturity in, in, in Christ. Um, and when Pastor Tim taught those lessons, it was uh, very different. And then um, in the year 2003, uh, I, I was invited, to, invited by Pastor Saji Abraham uh, of Hosul Bible Church to translate the messages of Pastor Tim into Tamil. Mm -hmm. um, so then we had this three-day pastor seminar where I was translating the message and at, at many places, I felt like God was personally speaking to me. Uh, I was outstruck by the message. So we had um, good discussions about uh, Christian life, uh, faith in the person, the finished work of the person of uh, Jesus Christ. Um, and that's how I got introduced to Fellowship Bible Church for the very first time. Uh, then in 2005, when I completed my uh, education in the seminary, um, Pastor Saji, um, Saji Abraham from Hosu Bible Church, uh, invited me to uh, be an uh, assistant pastor at the uh, Hosu Bible Church. Um, then we got introduced to um, uh, Mike Thomas, uh, Pastor Scott McManical, um, uh, Brother Jim Poole, and many others in FBC. And after our um, marriage, we were able to visit uh, the church several times. Um, so that's a little bit about us and our association uh, with FBC. Yeah, awesome. And uh, yeah, I remember uh, a couple of those first trips at, during that time. Um, I was still living in Thailand and uh, I think traveled with my dad, met my dad over there and and met you guys for the first time. And 
back then you were single and uh <laughs> and uh jo jocelyn hadn't come along yet and uh so so tell us a little bit go ahead yeah uh, they say single and happy and now i'm married and blessed <laughs> amen amen yeah that's right so tell us a little bit about um, where you guys are currently working, where you've been working. Um, you know, you were there in Host Revival Church for many years, and, and then you went somewhere else for four years. And now just yesterday, you've moved back again. So tell us about uh, those moves and, and what's been going on in your ministry. Okay, um, yeah, we started out full time. Um, work with the uh, Postal Bible Church in 2005, hmm. uh, but I was a part of Postal Bible Church since 2002. Um, from 2005 till 2016, we uh, worked with Pastor Saji Abraham and uh, Pastor Augustine at Postal Bible Church. And when <clears throat> when when we felt like the Postal Bible Church body is uh, uh, fully grown and matured a uh, group of people with uh, efficient uh, leaders who are able to lead the church. Um, at that time, um, we got a call or, from um, my dad, uh, who, is, who was pastoring um, a Baptist church. This is called as Tamil. Tamil is the language, Tamil Baptist Church, um, in a place uh, known as Namakal, which is four hours from Hosur. Um, he was expressing his concern about a division within the church. It was primarily over the property left by the missionaries. And the church was established in, uh, in the late uh, 1890s. Um, so the missionaries left uh, a good um, area of property and many people misused. And then uh, there are two groups who were mismanaging the property. And they were bringing that division within the church. And so when we came to know about it, it was a big burden. So what we thought was like we shared our, our issue with the, uh, with the pastor, pastors at Hosur. And we thought like we will start training a group of people uh, in Namakar. Uh, so at Hosur, we uh, used the chronological lessons to uh, plant and uh, build the church to maturity. So we thought, why don't we teach the same lessons in Namakal? So we started weekend Bible studies um, at Namakal. I and Pastor Agustin used to go on alternating weeks and teach them. Uh, so while traveling there, we felt like the church needed, uh, uh, you know, like a, a little more intensive uh, uh, involvement. Uh, so after doing that for one year, we again, uh, talked about the progress uh, we discussed in our pastoral team. Um, then we thought, okay, we will make a move for a few years to Namakal to work with the church. And our aim was at Hosu Bible Church, we valued uh, Ephesians 4 um, passage, like 4, um, 12, 13, and 14, you know, that God has gifted um, leaders to the church to equip the body to do the ministry. Mm -hmm. And that's the model that we <clears throat> followed at uh, Hosur. And now we see um, several believers in Hosur are equipped to do the ministry of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we want to do the same thing um, with, the, with the Namakal church. And while, while doing like, I, I mean, we, we as a pastoral team, we believe that we cannot equip by giving them any teaching. It should be a very strong uh, biblically sound uh, way of teaching the scriptures. And uh, so we thought in our personal lives or in the church life at Hasur, uh, the chronological way of teaching the Bible uh, helped us to understand the person and work of Christ in the right way, mm. uh, leading to the person of Christ. Mm. And um, through Christ, you know, I think the way scripture teaches Christ and we, when we understand Christ, we find a solution for every issue, whether it is in our personal life or church life. Um, so we thought like we will go there and teach them through the uh, chronological lesson. So we begin with uh, Genesis and we taught 
Uh, since the Namakal Church is, uh, is a church that is established before 100 years, uh, the people had a fair understanding of the scripture, um, but they did not have a good understanding about the person and work of God. Mm. Means like if you have a Bible quiz competition, you no, know, they may actually score a high grade in that than the Hosur church members because they know uh, the scriptures. But problem was they did not know the God of the scriptures mm. um, because many times they learn it here and there. They are not able to put things together and see it. So as a result, there we found two major problems. One was religious ritualism. Uh, for them, uh, coming to church is like a ritual. I will go to church on a Sunday. I will send my children to Sunday school. Mm. I will pay my tithes. I will attend all the prayer meetings. So it was more of a ritualism. And the second problem was hypocrisy. Mm. Um, religious uh, ritualism results in a hypocrisy where uh, people feel that uh, they want to pretend to be godly before others. Mm. And as a result, the church did not have a good relationship. See, when you're actually pretending to be godly and good, you mm. cannot have honest relationships with each other. And I, we felt that's the root cause for all the problems and disunity in the church. Um, so um, when we uh, talked with the pastoral team and they said, okay, it's good that you can move and you can work with them. So we moved as a family to Namakul. And uh, we started teaching the scripture we, we begin and we completed the chronological as teaching up to the gospels and we started uh, with the uh, book of romans with the epistle of romans and we are going to complete it um, uh, so <clears throat> for so we did it, we are doing it for four years mm -hmm. and now uh, in this four years um, uh, now we feel that god is raising a team of leaders Mm. Um, then uh, we focused uh, when we focused the whole church we thought we have to pay spe special attention to this group of leaders mm. uh, so they can actually like do the uh, work so I spent a little more time with the, with the leaders um, and now uh, because of uh, this COVID uh, issues um, at ACA, we are actually running out of uh, faculty members. Mm. We used to have people from the U.S. coming and helping us with the teaching. And for the past one year, and we are expecting this for the next two years. Mm. Uh, so I had to come and teach here for four days a week. So we thought we will mm. um, rent a house here and we will stay here and teach four days at ACA. And Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we can travel to Namakul and continue to mm. work with the uh, church um, yeah. and the other reason that we chose Namakal is um, according to Joshua project uh, the, the, the Nam Christian it's it's only 0.8 percent Christianity in the district wow uh, so we have a bigger burden uh, yeah. to, uh, to have this partnership for a longer time to work with with the community there hmm. So I, I've got a question for you. That I want to kind of expand something you said about that. But before that, I wanted to ask Jocelyn. So Jocelyn, you, you guys were married. You had kids. Um, you were, uh, you know, involved there at Hoser. Uh, Hoser Bible Church um, had become a, a very established church, very established in the faith. Um, I'm sure you were enjoying just really great fellowship with uh, Joyce and Rathinum and some of the other uh, women in the church uh, on the same page with grace and the finished work of Christ and the truth, uh, living there at ACA, your kids probably attending the school there. Um, and then you had to uproot and move to Hanson's home area <laughs> that was not your home area and plug into this um, legalistic church, a lot of fighting, division, not on the same page with people. So as the wife of a pastor slash mis missionary, um, how, 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 how was that for you? Yeah, uh, it was different, but you know, God was helping me there. 
maybe it was difficult in the beginning time the the way people behave and talk and and uh, we try to be friends with everyone we want to like, build relationship and friendship but uh, then we have to be careful because uh, it can cause problems because of the issue of gossiping telling about us to that <laughs> so uh, god was teaching me to be uh, you know be an example uh, to other women there and many of them are elderly women here we had a younger group like because it was really in, it was a new church and there it was like more uh, elderly women so uh, uh, i had to just you know try to be an example to them and and then and it was it was good <laughs> but mm-hmm. i missed the fellowship there and you know but god helped me to like uh, build the relationship with the women there and especially i was focusing on the kids there in sunday school because i was not so fluent in tamil mm-hmm. uh, i was not doing any ministry as such with the women there but i was like i was i was learning tamil properly and with the kids there so it was nice experience to be with the kids and i was just sitting in the sunday school first with the other teachers who were already teaching and then uh, slowly started teaching in tamil and it was nice experience and getting involved with the kids uh, in namakkal and uh, but because of covid we like it was like the sunday schools are all stalled and like that. <laughs> that's something yeah. that yeah otherwise yeah god has been teach with us and teaching us new things how to uh, to ministry in a different feet <laughs> yeah so did you after being there for four years did uh, did god give you some close relationships with with families and women there yeah like there are like some men not like so close like who i had here in i yeah. her school because it's been like many years but still i yeah, got some good friends who, yeah. I, who 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 helped me with like who we could do as a ministry with the kids like so yeah awesome like, <laughs> yeah that's great so hansen you, you said the the church had uh was started in the 1890s so it's a church of over 100 years old and and you said that uh they had a very vast uh, understanding of the bible in terms of bible knowledge um so it might be confusing for people to to understand how like how can you have that kind of bible knowledge how can you know the word of god and yet have such blatant division and problems fighting uh in the church to the point where a host or bible church needed to send one of their pastors to you know help disciple them help establish them in the faith like how, like how, how can that be um yeah see um uh, i think in my christian life one of the things uh, that i have learned is i can i can know the bible without actually understanding the person and work of jesus christ um that makes a huge difference um one one thing is um see we had one of the <clears throat> uh, elders in namkal who is not uh, now there he moved on to sri lanka uh, he was a guy who believed that we need to follow all the 10 commandments of the old testament hmm. uh, so he taught through the 10 commandments of the old testament for nearly a year in the church hmm. you no know, breaking it in different pieces so people were thinking that if you want to go to heaven you have to actually follow all these 10 commandments you know um so when we were talking uh, when we were when i was teaching through the chronological lessons we came to exodus chapter 20 so even before talking uh, or teaching about the 10 commandments i talked about why god gave it see god gave it to them not to actually qualify them to be his children mm. but he gave to them because they are already qualified as his children mm. and he tells them that i have called you to be a holy and separate nation for myself 
Mm. And God says, this is my standard. See, I am the truth. So when you are my people, now I desire that you live a life of truth, that you keep yourself away from lies. Mm. So now, see, the Ten Commandments is not actually a way of salvation. Rather, it's only a reflection of who God is. Mm. So we, we can have actually a standard to measure our walk with God by not comparing ourselves with other people, by only comparing to the person and character of God. Mm. Um, so um, actually, when I came to that lesson on knowing God, we had a we had like uh, big uh, debates. Now, I had to actually sit and talk with some of the people in the church for long hours mm. um, just to tell them like, you, you can go to heaven even without keeping the Ten Commandments. Mm. I said, like, <laughs> see, we are not going to heaven because of our obedience. Yeah. We are going to heaven because of the obedience of the Son of God and His faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Uh, so uh, that's one example. Uh, then uh, another example that I can use is like, um, you know, like uh, the church is following a statement of confession called 1689 Statement of uh, Baptist Confession of Faith. Mm. Um, so again, the other other elder, you know, the guy who moved on to uh, Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. he he's a very nice person. But when he taught the 1689 Confession of uh, Faith to a group of leaders in the church, you now they were really um, kind of uh, uh, not. It, 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 there is nothing wrong with the confession of faith. It's 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 a it's a great statement. Yeah. Um, but it was not revolving around what Christ did. It was revolving around what human beings can do. And especially in a country like India, where you know many people believe in the law of karma, mm. that you earn your salvation through your good works. Right. Uh, so people think that by engaging in godly activities, they can actually go to heaven. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so at, when we came to Romans, um, Romans chapter um, uh, eight, nine, and ten, I talked about what a person need to actually receive uh, his salvation. Mm -hmm. I said you need to believe Lord Jesus Christ in your heart mm -hmm. and confess him with your mouth. And I asked a question like, how many of you have actually gone through that experience of salvation? You know, many baptized people came to me and told that I have never done that in my life. Wow. Because they think that baptize, getting, receiving baptism, mm -hmm. taking part in Lord's table and giving to the church, all these things actually make them a Christian and yeah. take them to uh, yeah. heaven. Part of so, the yeah. So there is a, uh, I felt like there was a wrong yeah. way of discipleship in yeah. which it is focused only on what you can do to achieve your salvation. And mm -hmm. especially in, in a country like India, that kind of teaching is it's, it's, it's actually satisfying the um, ego of a person in his spirituality. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you say that, it means you are not saved, you're not going, I mean, you're, you're not saved by your works, you're not going to go to heaven by your works, but <clears throat> trusting in the, in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I used an example like, uh, when I go to heaven, if someone asks me why I should allow you into heaven, I will just say only one thing. Because Christ has died and risen for me, mm -hmm. and he is my righteousness. So I should get a place in heaven. Yeah. That's number one. Um, so I think that was the main problem. People were not led to the person of Christ. Mm. They were actually given a list of do's and don'ts. Yeah. If you're a Christian, do this do that. And you can use plenty of Bible verses to support such kind of uh, uh, teaching. Yeah. Um, I think that was that, that was the root problem. Um, yeah. These people yeah. were not knowing Christ. Mm. Yeah, and so what you're describing there, we would call, <clears throat> we would call syncretism, where people are mixing old beliefs with, with Christianity or with Bible truth. And, <clears throat> and it's and it highlights, I think, the importance of teaching chronologically, teaching foundationally, beginning at the beginning. And I'm sure those old missionaries back in the late 1890s and into the 1900s um, 
were just like all the missionaries, um, you know, just going in and learning the language and then giving the gospel and teaching topically. And very, very, and because these people were coming out of, you know, a religion that's based on works and performance and, you know, appeasing the gods, that, that mindset, that mentality, uh, they just carried right into Christianity. And they're not worshiping the same gods, but they have the same view and the same principle, same way of going about, you know, in this, in this new religion. And so that's kind of what they've been doing for a hundred years. And, and so you, you said that you had to spend a lot of time uh, talking with them about the knowing God lessons uh, in order to get them to be willing to have you teach through it. And so the knowing God lessons are knowing God lessons and for people that don't know is a chronological foundational unfolding of God's revelation of himself through the old Testament and into the gospels. And so, um, once you did that, um, like what, what was, what was their response to that? What differences did you see in terms of, you know, their view of God and their view of Christianity. Mm -hmm. I think the, the first response was, uh, there were several different, uh, I mean, it's, it's a group of about 120 people. Um, so the, the, the believers who came to the Lord recently, the last three, four years, um, they were really enjoying the lessons and they were with us because they are learning the Bible for the first time mm. and they were very happy and, and they felt so accepted and uh, so relieved. Mm. Um, but whereas now we also have a group of people who are like fourth generation Christians, like mm. their great, great grandparents uh, became Christians through the missionaries mm. and um, they really opposed, they really opposed uh, uh, the work and because sometimes you now they ask you this objective questions like um, uh, do you really uh, uh, say that um, we can go to heaven without following the ten commandments mm. uh, and they need only a verb one word answer to so I said yes I believe yeah. then immediately they'll say oh see he, he's he's actually teaching against what our church believes mm. uh, uh, so, uh, in, at first, we had rejection, and one of the uh, elders uh, was uh, was really upset and uh, angry, and he he started uh, talking um, about me in my absence, and um, so I was a bit discouraged at that time. Mm -hmm. Then, the spirit of the Lord, you no, know, brought this thing to my understanding, like. You continue to teach the lessons because if I'm going to pick a fight or if I'm going to answer an issue, if I'm going to address the problems, I need to keep working on a solution for each one of them. Uh, but I thought, okay, let me teach the lessons which will train the people to learn God in the right way so they will be able to actually manage um, uh, their interpersonal conflicts or they will be able to understand what the Lord says. And to my surprise, uh, you now when we came to the book of Romans, especially Romans chapter 3, 4, and 5, mm. I see the attitude of this particular person changed completely. Uh. I felt like he was, you no. Know, I think you, you're familiar with Pilgrim's Progress, uh, the story of Christian, uh -huh. uh, uh, who was carrying this burden of sin. Mm. And when I looked at his face, I felt like he was carrying that bag and all of a sudden, that bag has fallen away from him. That's the analogy, closest mm -hmm. analogy that I can give. Mm -hmm. And he became so supportive, so mm -hmm. supportive. And then, uh, even in his prayers, though, uh, we felt like um, he started to pray uh, about the person and work of Christ. And mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's like 60, 62 years old. Wow. Uh, so in our Indian culture, in honor and shame culture, you won't ask sorry to a person who is anger to you. Mm. you know, uh, that's not a common practice. So I felt 
he was actually asking his sorry through his prayers not only yeah. to god but to me <laughs> yeah. uh, that's the way i actually i i felt um so yeah. one people one group of people were enjoying the other group had an opposition but now uh, i think especially through the books of romans um, from chapters 3 to 8 when we talked about our justification and sanctification yeah uh, many people were able to get a complete picture of salvation and we feel like now people are more happy uh, they are mm. they are more relational now even when we uh, told them like we are moving to namakkal and we do this so that we want to equip you in a better way people mm. understood and they said they were very supportive they said okay we understand and uh, yeah. we would like to uh, uh, continue the ministry grow and they sent us with their um, uh, blessings mm. uh, so um, and and now i see that there is truly a good understanding of the gospel of jesus christ mm. um, and we are yet to continue with our uh, ephesians and philippians and we have to move on yeah um, uh, so i think by the time we complete this lessons you know we will have a miniature of our hosur bible church community at uh, uh, at namakkal mm-hmm. um, and uh, even now we have started uh, uh, working in two different villages already uh, after we moved in and um, we are getting a, a good response like just few families like less than 10 people in both places uh, but they are also getting firmly rooted in in the gospel of uh, christ mm. um, so i would say it's it's really adventurous spiritual adventure that i yeah. had there in the church yeah so you obviously you guys did evaluation before you moved there to determine you needed to move there you were there for four years teaching um i assume you did some evaluation to determine that it was time to they're they're ready to begin leaving them on their own and so you guys have moved back to hoser and you're planning to continue to go back on weekends to continue to on with the teaching and all so <clears throat> what what are some of the things that are in place now Uh, upon your evaluation that tells you you know they're 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 ready to begin you know continuing on on their own i think the the first thing that um, gave us a confidence to make this move um, is before we started working with the church my dad is a pastor and he was responsible for everything in the church like visiting the sick preaching on all sundays teaching all the bible studies um managing the finance now everything kind of was on him uh but now uh we have people you know who teach uh, regularly on wednesdays and fridays mm. uh and um so i teach on sundays uh, primarily uh, i share with my dad whenever he is able to speak he will speak otherwise i will do the teachings on sundays um then uh, even in finances you know um like i said uh if the pastor is going to worry about uh the budget the financing everything uh, then he may not be able to spend more time on prayer and uh, uh, shepherding the church uh, so we now a team to handle the finances uh, getting ready and also the village ministries when we started we used to go every week mm. uh, every sunday evening we used to go and conduct the sunday school for children in service uh, mm. but now we have um, like six families who are partnering with us in in doing that uh, that work mm. um, so we see a team of uh, leaders uh, who are um, getting ready to help the church that's um, that's the first major uh, change we see in that Mm. and the next thing is we also saw a great um, change in in my dad um, i felt like uh, he is now feeling more confident like uh, when when we started doing this four years back mm. uh, for the first whole year i was doing all the teaching like all sundays all fridays all uh, wednesdays we used to share but most of the wednesdays i was teaching mm. um, um then our 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 presence you know he has to go through dialysis four times a day the peritoneal wow. dialysis 
Uh, so even though he was physically weak, I feel like there is a great spiritual transformation in him that mm. he's feeling happy and satisfied and he's getting more and more involved uh, mm. in a very positive way in the, in the church. And um, last year, when he, every last Sunday of the year, we have a time to share our reflections on that particular year, what we learned from God. Yeah. And when he came, uh, he just shared and said that, um, now I value um, uh, discipleship. Wow. So I feel God is compelling me to disciple young people in the church. Wow. So the rest of the life, I want to spend more time individually with people discipling them. So uh, I also see a great uh, uh, change in his approach towards uh, mm. uh, shepherding. Yeah. That's the next thing. Um, then the third thing is like... Um, Genuinely, we felt like on the weekdays, uh, we don't have much to do there uh, because people are also working. So uh, visiting right. them or spending time. So most of the uh, ministry happens on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I see. So, so our, our absence there from Monday to Thursday may not uh, affect. Uh, um, I see. So those, those are some things that yeah. we want to see. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I had another question for you, Jocelyn. Um, so when you were when you were in Hoser before you moved to Namakal, uh, your kids were attending school at ACA, right? Yeah. Oops, kids, right? ACA just oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then when you moved to Namakal, uh, you had to homeschool for the first time, and uh, yeah. so uh, you know we have people here at FBC that homeschool. And uh, so how did that, how did four years of homeschooling go for you and Amy and Hudson? Yeah, it, it was a different experience, and, but it was nice. I could spend a lot of time with them because when they go to school, like we, they're so busy, they're, they're from morning to evening, they'll go to school, evening they'll come with a lot of homeworks, they'll be busy writing the homeworks. And mm. so we don't get any time to spend with them personally. Mm. So this years were so good that uh, when we sit together alone, they have a lot of questions. I can like talk with them, like answer them, like uh, from like you from the word of God, like what relating the the, the studies to what God says, and it was a really good experience. And uh, I could teach them or like mem help them to memorize a lot of psalms and memory verses, and mm. uh, I enjoyed this years uh, spiritually with my kids and like help them and getting closer to them uh, and it was a lot of relax from that hectic uh, school work <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it was really good but um i don't know if they, when they look academically i don't know where they are because when they, they here everyone is so competitive and uh, maybe academically they're low but i can say like uh, about god knowing more about god Spending time, Hudson is already like reading numbers and, you know, uh, like, like, like spending more time reading God. So they have time because they are home. When they're homeschooled, they have a lot of time. Yeah. So that was a nice experience. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So now that you've moved back to Hoser, will they go back to the school in ACA or will you continue to homeschool? Or? Uh, because of the COVID situation, they are, actually we enrolled them to the school here, uh -huh. but they are still at home doing online classes. Okay. Uh, that's also fine. They don't have much classes. They have just a few classes and homeworks and stuff. Yeah. So in the evening they get time to play and it, that's also relaxed. But once the school starts, <laughs> it's going to be more hectic. Yeah. But if it's so, maybe I, I would like to help. The, I was helping the kids with autism here before. Uh, so I can part time do that, which I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So will they? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, it was good that I could give them a base, like you know, help mm. them like two years, uh, be with them, and they they developed reading habit a lot. So this mm. is good, good at reading now. So that's something uh, I'm happy with. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So will school at ACA will that be in English? Yeah. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. So lastly, um, 
COVID has ravaged India um, and the area you guys were in, people were really, really hard hit. So um, just share with us some of the things that you guys in the church, you were doing there to help bring relief to, to local families. What all, what all were you doing and what kind of impact do you feel like it had? Um, I think the, the second wave that we went through in, in the months of uh, April to um, June uh, is worst. Uh, the, the first wave was uh, in 2020, uh, April to August. Uh, I think it, even though we had a lot of losses, um, but it was not like the second one. So during the first wave, um, you know, with the help of uh, Fellowship Bible Church, um, we started um, helping about nine different churches and pastors uh, in our area. And, um, and many of them, you know, they lost their job. And uh, during that time, the government was not actually um, helping them um, to run even their families. Um, so we, we really extended our support for about 200 plus families. Uh, and, uh, and we thought like we are going to do it for one month. Uh, but we ended up doing it for six months continuously till they could go back to their works, you know, and get an earning. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, they really enjoyed God. We did it not only for Christians, but also for non-Christians who, mm -hmm. you know, through the churches. So uh, people uh, really felt the love of God that, uh, you know, bear one another's burden, um, Paul says, uh, where they felt like uh, um, they're cared and loved in Christ. And especially in one of the churches, that church is located in a village which is 30 kilometers from Namakal. It's a place mm. known as uh, Sirinali Koil. Um, there we have uh, about uh, like 35 uh, old women coming to the church. These are people from the missionaries days. Like they are about 70, somewhere between 70 to 90 years old. Wow. And, um, and they used to come like maybe like once in a month, they used to come to church. But when they, these women were not cared by their families and they didn't get any government aid. So when we were able to help them during that six months, hmm. you no, know, the pastor said, now all those women started regularly coming to church and they're becoming very active, <laughs> very vibrant, uh, uh, talking about Christ to other people in the village. And in an Indian culture, you know, when an elderly person says something, people will listen to them. Mm. Uh, and it has moved to a level you know, where now we have to actually this hall was built by the missionaries and it was very old and when there is rain it leaks and people are not able to have the service mm. so now the pastor came and told me like uh, now we have to rebuild the hall because we are having regular services and we are expecting many more people to come Wow! Um, so uh, we, we have already started work in two different villages, extending the uh, church halls, making it bigger because the numbers have increased. Now, this is despite of church being closed for six months, but just because we were able to get involved in their life, they feel God cares for them. Mm. You know? And uh, they, they, they are so thankful to God. That's one. Then uh, some of the um, uh, pastors you know, whom we were able to help during the time um, they are very thankful and that also has opened a way now uh, I'm thinking that when I go on uh, the weekends um, at least twice a month I should meet with them to teach the chronological lessons because they ask this question mm. uh, why do you do this because some of them belong to some Christian uh, organizations or church groups mm. when our pastors are not willing to help us we don't know who you are but you found us in need and you are helping us why mm. um, and I said if you are interested why come, let's study the Bible and see why. Yeah. So, um, uh, that's, uh, that's something. And during the second wave, it was very, very bad. Like um, we are still going through it and uh, we are not sure you know, when this will actually um, get over. Mm. Um, uh, so even uh, during this time, I means like we were completely bankrupt as a church because we used all the reserve funds for the whole one year uh, for running the church and helping the people. 
And once again, now we are very thankful that uh, FBC is very considerate and you're willing to partner. Uh, so this time uh, we are helping about 80 plus families every uh, month uh, because uh, this time, even though the, the spread of COVID was high, there's a new government. Um, you know, they actually uh, helped many families, uh, huh. the necessary groceries and a little help. Hmm. And they also made sure that uh, more people are vaccinated so that uh, many uh, offices are kept open. Um, so the need is not such high as the uh, first wave uh, when we consider this uh, work. Mm. Um, uh, but God is continuing to build the uh, build the church um, in in all those nine villages where we can partner with yeah. with the partners. Yeah. Well, as you send us updates of you know things that are going on there and what you're doing and the needs and all, we're we're passing that on to the body and. I know many, many people here have been been praying, been praying for India, praying for you all and your churches, and and that uh, you know this going through hardship and difficulty like this is um, you know it's it's difficult on us, but you know if you look through if you look through history, you know really from the time of the fall <laughs> all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through history. Man only turns to God in the middle of crisis. You know, we, we only turn to God when we need him. And so, you know, our, I think our, our, our number one prayer request has been, even though it's been so bad, even though it's been so difficult, that this would actually result in, in many people being reached, you know, that it would, that it would create opportunities for the church um, to reach the lost. And, um, and so we'll, we'll continue to pray to that end. Uh, in closing, what would, what would be some prayer requests that you guys would uh, appreciate our body uh, being aware of and, 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 and uh, just praying for you guys? Yeah. Um, uh, pray for us. Like, uh, see, when, when we moved from Hosu to Namakul, we had a very clear plan in our mind of what the Lord wants us to do there. Mm. Uh, but now when we are uh, moving back to Hosur, um, uh, it's kind of like I feel so, uh, so nervous about it because we were doing a work for four years. And um, uh, I mean, we, we want the Lord to establish uh, the church, not only the church, uh, because I feel like establishing by the church and equipping them, um, it, the church is in one of the most needy places in India, mm. with a Christian population of less than one person. Mm. Um, uh, so I mean, I, I keep on telling the church like we need to establish a church in every village in our district. Mm. Uh, so that is firmly rooted in Christ, and mm. our focus should be on people who have not heard the gospel. People who do not, uh, who are not saved. So let's mm. focus on them, and uh, we will work on them. Mm. Um, so I, 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 I'm feeling nervous because I don't know um, whether it's the right move or not. And we are always open to go back. You know, if we need, if our physical presence is needed there. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> please pray that uh, I, we, we, we will rest. In the wisdom of God, I think God has a plan in bringing us here. Yeah, uh, that, that spiritually for us, uh, then uh, uh, pray for the leaders in Namakul who are growing. Mm. Uh, now the church has a great unity. Um, we talk to the people who are making divisions, and they are calm and happy, uh, and we are in constant touch with them. That uh, I always uh, take them back to the prayer of Jesus Christ in John seventeen. Uh, where he prays for the unity of the body. I say, I know, um, I, uh, so pray for their unity. Um, then we are also like um, thinking to buy a small uh, mini van uh, to travel to those villages with the children and a team of people. Um, mm. uh, so God in his time, if he thinks he needs it, you know, uh, that's, that's a kind of material need that we 
we are placing to the Lord. So yeah. you, you can remember these things for us. What would something like that cost? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like to, uh, to, yeah, it's about like $10,000. 10, okay. Um, that's, yeah. that, that's, a, that's a small mini van, which will, we can go through these village roads and we can take seven people with us. That's, that's something in our mind. Yeah. So we, we can just pray for us. Yeah, to do outreach and, yeah. yeah. Jocelyn, any prayer requests about returning and re-engaging with uh, women of Hosur? Um, yeah, um, I don't know if I, like, I'll be able to, I, I, I'm in touch with Ratnam, Joyce and all, but still, and even like once we just came yesterday, so today evening also we have been called to one of the families in Hosur Church to for a, for a prayer. So we, we will be in touch with our or women here, uh, but weekends will, I'll maximum try to go with him to Namakal and uh, continue what I was doing like with the Sunday school ministry there. And um, yeah, continue to pray for me as now I put the kids to the school, uh, that the Lord will lead me like what I should do here. If he wants me to work part time with the artisan uh, center or be with my kids or like whatever. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good to uh, see you guys again and, and uh, uh, receive an update. Um, we sure love you and miss you. And um, we're, we're going to have a conference uh, in October, uh, some kind of a conference. Um, <laughs> we're we're actually talking about making it more of a mini conference, but then once a quarter or so, uh, bring in a, a few others. So kind of kind of have four mini conferences throughout the next year, or something like that. Um, bringing people in at uh, more frequent times, but smaller numbers. So we'll just have to uh, keep our eye on you know things with COVID and all like that, and who can actually come here and you know where there's like things are really uh we were just talking uh yesterday morning uh on the um our global you know meeting we have every monday morning and it's getting bad in in africa now um i mean it's been bad in some countries but now it seems like it's getting bad again and and uh malawi like up to this point they really have had no issues now all of a sudden it's 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 bad in Malawi and and so yeah we're not we're not really sure who's going to be able to come but we'll we'll have to just see see what the Lord does and um, you know what doors He opens and all that so all right we love you guys and thanks for joining in and we will we will all be praying for you thank you thank you and please convey our love and. Regards and thanks to uh, everyone at uh, FBC, the pastoral team, the believers, and the mission committee. You have been a great encouragement to us. And, and there are several times like uh, your counsel, uh, your guidance, especially your teaching has um, equipped us in the Lord. So we are really thankful to the Lord for the body of Fellowship Bible Church. Mm. Right. Praise the Lord. 